Hi, I am Jack from Achievers. We conduct really awesome H2 Math tuition. For those of you who are starting H2 Math this year, let me give you a quick introduction to what H2 Math is about. So this syllabus is going to be divided into two sections, Pure Math and Statistics. In JC1, you will be learning the majority of the Pure Math topics, which are more similar to what you have learned in your secondary school's additional math. And then you will be ending off the year with a promotional exam. Now, this promotional exam is a very, very important exam. I think some of you probably already known about it. It is an exam that will determine whether you guys are going to be promoted to JC2. That is why it is exceptionally important. And from my experience, it is definitely not an exam that can be prepared during the very last minute. So you must make sure that you plan and study ahead so they can be fully prepared by the time when you sit down in the exam hall for the promotional exam. And in JC2, you will be spending the first semester wrapping up the rest of the pure math topics that you didn't manage to finish in JC1. And then you will be covering statistics, which consists mainly of all the probabilities related topics. And then you will be doing mostly revision, getting yourself ready to sit for two, three hours H2 math exam papers. And that will be first done in your school and then subsequently in the actual A levels. So sit tight because the pace is actually really fast in A-levels, but let's look forward to an exciting time ahead. For H2 math, you will need to get a new calculator. It is called the graphing calculator. And just as it is named, it is the calculator that will be helping us to plot graphs. As compared to your scientific calculator, the graphing calculator will feel sort of expensive. It is $100 plus, but I think it is worth it. For me, I personally prefer my graphing calculator over my scientific calculator. It will take most of us a while to get used to this graphing calculator, but I think once you are familiar with it, it is going to be that calculator that is going to be indispensable. And what a student of mine told me, there was once when her graphing calculator broke down and guess what? She felt that her life came to a stall. Hearing this, I think some students will start to get worried and nervous about whether they are able to handle this journey. And I must admit that H2 math is going to be a significant upgrade from your secondary school's additional math. And it's not going to be helping when some of your seniors will most likely be telling you how difficult H2 math is. So yes, I think H2 math is a challenging subject, but at the same time, I also feel that ultimately it is going to be our choice whether to let it overwhelm us or to become masters of it. And once we do master H2 math, trust me, it is not going to be just the grades that we gain, but also how we learn to process facts in a more logical and systematic way that is going to make this one year plus an exceptional learning experience. Here are two tips that I want to start you off with so that you too can master H2 math starting from JC1. First is to know that you have to grow and adapt to become mature and independent learners. The nature of H2 math will make it impossible for any teachers to give you that specific set of instruction on exactly how you should be learning and the exact steps to solve problems. And the lecture style format of how H2 math is taught will be your first step in independent learning. Some students who refuse to adapt will gain very little from these lectures, but for those who embrace it will learn plentiful. I remember when I was in a university, there was this particular lecture that very, very few people paid attention to and uh, I happened to be one of them. The reason was because the professor was known to be a very, very boring presenter and his presentation used those old-fashioned transparencies. It didn't help when the field of study that he was teaching happened to be extremely abstract. So whenever his lecture starts, instead of paying attention to his lecture, I would habitually be chatting away with my friends. It didn't take long for me to realize that if I were to depend on his lectures, they would actually lead me to failure. There were no textbooks, so I decided that I could at least read his lecture notes, which were actually just print out of his transparencies. It wasn't easy in the beginning, but as I spent the weeks patiently sitting down and going through the notes, I realized that they weren't actually that bad. The sequence of his explanations were actually very, very well thought of. And as I tried to plow through them, I began to develop this confidence in the subject to, a, to the point when I began to feel arrogant the next time when I stepped into the lecture hall. So the moment when the professor started his lecture, I started to chat with my friends again. But this time, something was different. I caught myself more and more drawn to what the professor was talking about as I started chatting with my friends 
to the point when I have to ask my friends to just pause for a moment because suddenly the things that he was talking about made so much more sense than what I've understood myself. And some of the concepts that I thought I already knew began to make even more sense. The gaps that I didn't even know exist was actually patched. And ideas that I thought I've already gotten a good grasp of, he somehow managed to find new perspective and better perspective in approaching them. And from that day onwards, as long as I play my part in learning, his lectures would become some of the best lectures I've ever attended. And subsequently, I actually managed to top my cohort in this field of study. My point is, when it comes to higher level learning, where independent study becomes crucial, it is our attitude that is going to be the most important. By adopting the correct kind of attitude as a student, half of the battle has already been won. My second tip for you will be to customize your study approach for different age to math topics. One habit that we picked up from our secondary school, which works pretty well for additional math, is to approach new topics by simply attempting questions. When the topics are practice-centric, this approach works pretty well, and there are indeed such topics in the H2 math syllabus. But there are also H2 math topics that are theory-centric, and these topics cannot be learned well if you were to just approach them by purely practicing. Practice is still going to be important, but for such topics, it is even more important for you to first gain a good grasp of the theoretical framework before any practice is going to make logical sense. So once you have identified a topic as theory-centric, please make sure that you patiently sit yourself down to understand the theories and concepts before you plunge into questions. Head over to our website at www.achievers.com to read more about practice-centric and theory-centric approach because I believe this is the best and most strategic approach to learning H2 math. There are definitely more to mastering H2 math, but these two tips should give you a good start. I pray that through this subject, you will be able to pick up a lot of useful skills and gain meaningful insights to the world around us. Do check out our tuition class at www.achievers.com because our lessons are going to be super awesome and they are the best place for you to experience H2Math.